What I wanted to share with you today is The Good and the Beautiful's brand new science curriculum for ages preschool through second grade. Yesterday there was sun and there was rain Beauty in the Monday Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Hannah and I love doing videos about not only homeschooling but motherhood, pretty much any motherhood topic. So be sure to subscribe if you're not subscribed here already. I took a bit of a break for a number of months from YouTube and I've missed it, so it feels good to be back. I've been working actually on a large, a big motherhood related project and I'll give you more details in the description box below. But I do plan on doing more YouTube videos here, so be sure to subscribe so you can follow along. What I wanted to share with you today is The Good and the Beautiful's brand new science curriculum for the younger ages. And I have a four and a half year old and a two and a half year old so this is perfect for our family especially since my son the younger one he likes to join in on our homeschool lessons when I'm doing pre-k level work with our daughter so I love having this for our whole family to jump in and do together the ages that they specifically list online are ages preschool up through second grade but as you can see it's a nice swath of ages and I love how there are these science lessons and activities for those younger learners to really get them introduced to those science topics. I also have a video that I put up recently all about the Good and the Beautiful's brand new kindergarten prep level curriculum. So I will also link that below in case you're interested in looking at another brand new curriculum of theirs that just came out recently. And we do have a video up that I think I put up last fall, fall 2021, about their new preschool level. They completely revamped and redid their preschool level curriculum. So I have a video about that as well. A quick bit of background in case you are are new here. Like I said, my name is Hannah. I'm an elementary teacher turned stay-at-home mom to our two kids, Sophie and Soren. Sophie is four and a half, Soren is two and a half, and we've been doing homeschooling and we're loving that journey so far. It's just been a blast, especially for me, not only from a parent um, vantage point, but also from a former elementary teacher perspective. It has been so fun to research and get into curriculums, and I've just been such a fan of the Good and the Beautiful's work, so I'm excited to share about that with you. As far as curriculum goes, back when Sophie turned three, we did a casual year of preschool level work using the Sunlight Company. So if you've heard of the Sunlight brand, that's another amazing brand, amazing curriculum company. So we did the age three and four preschool level work for, from Sunlight for her when she turned three. And then this year we've been focusing more on pre-K level work. And I have been loving doing a combination of Sunlight curriculums pre-K level. So that's for ages four and five. And I've been combining the stories and books from Sunlight, which is a literature based curriculum, lots of books and stories with this Good and the Beautiful work. And we did the preschool level curriculum from the Good and the Beautiful, which it actually used to be their pre-K level. And then they just came out with their kindergarten prep book, so we're working through that as well. We've also been doing the level K math book from the Good and the Beautiful because there was a placement test online and I determined that Sophie was ready to start going through the level K math curriculum. And it has been a blast with such sweet, engaging activities activities and just really gentle lessons. So we've been loving the level K math from the good and the beautiful and I do plan to continue homeschooling throughout this summer at least several days a week just to keep that consistency. All right let's jump in and have a look at this brand new science curriculum. It's called Science for Little Hearts and Hands and then at the end I will be doing a lesson with my daughter so make sure you stick around and have a peek at an actual lesson with us. All right, let's take a look at this. The curriculum comes with both a parent guide and then this big book of science stories, which we'll look at next. And it is a big book of science stories. This parent guide is the book that has the 30 different lessons in it. So if we flip past the lesson overview, there are some optional books you can buy in addition to it. They have an activity supplies list. So every lesson, and I'll show you, every lesson has an opening activity and then an optional activity at the end. So I think that's really fun and they also just list out exactly what you would need for either of those. This is lesson one. It's called Trees That Live and Sleep and in this lesson they're going over the vocab word deciduous. So that's kind of what the focus is here and learning about trees and leaves. Um, they've got a list of supplies needed over here on the right and then the opening activity of course. This lesson has a little poem to read 
something I like about The Good and the Beautiful is that they always lay it out so nicely, what you should read to your child, what you should say, and I love how much these curriculum books are open and go. You don't need to do a ton of prep, which works really well for our family because we actually live in two different places throughout the year. I can't always be bringing lots of materials back and forth, and so open and go types of curriculum work really well for us. And here where it says movie time, that's because they actually have a special collection of password protected videos that go along with this curriculum. We actually have seen videos, we watch the videos for the preschool level as well as the kindergarten prep level, and I love how cute their videos are. The Good and the Beautiful does a very good job with their little videos for kids and usually catchy songs too. Then moving over here, still in lesson one, we've got discussion questions, they have sample answers, and then the optional activity at the end. And that is the end of lesson one. This is lesson two over here. It's called Trees Year Round. You can see the supplies needed. They've got an opening activity, another poem actually for this lesson. Not all of the lessons have a poem. And then what you're supposed to read to the child or discuss with your child. They've got story time. And so that means you're referring to the big book of science stories, which I will show you soon here. And then there's your discussion and optional activity. Let's flip through a little bit more. You can see edible plants is one of the lessons. We've got honeybees, really, really sweet topics, and worms, which is actually the lesson we will be doing today. As you can see, I already bent up the book. Bummer, but oh well. Um, it means it's well loved, right? Slithery snakes. All sorts of cute, really cute and engaging topics for kids. And the topic is called Fields and Flowers for this science curriculum for these younger ages, so that is kind of the overarching focus. The lessons in this book are lessons you can do in any order, so you don't necessarily have to walk through from lesson 1 to lesson 30. I chose lesson 20 actually for today just because the kids have been fascinated this spring with earthworms lately, and I thought that would be a good fit for today. As you can see, there's no poem with this lesson. There's story time instead of a video. So they do rotate through different types of activities, but still with a very nice similar layout and then discussion questions and an optional activity, which actually is to continue what our opening activity was. I really like how you can pick and choose according to oof, your students. Oops, I said your students, my children's interests. All right, let's take a look at this big book of science stories. I love any book that The Good and the Beautiful makes because they have such a commitment to quality and like high moral standards and also beautiful illustrations. So it's good and beautiful. Um, this is a big book actually. It's well over 200 pages and the illustrations are gorgeous. So they definitely are a story. There are plot lines going on, but they are definitely focused on science facts and teaching your student, teaching, I slipped up again, teaching your child or your student, I guess, your student, your child is your student, teaching them all about whatever the topic is. And these topics often coincide with the lessons from the parent guide. That's kind of how they set it up. So to, for today's lesson, we will be reading a story about worms. Here's the story we'll be reading today. This is called Wiggly Worms. And it's actually, this one is about a homeschool group that is learning about worms together. And besides kind of the interactions of the, of the students, of the kids in that group, you've got a lot of good facts about earthworms and Sorry, it's hard to turn the page one-handed. It's a heavy, big book. But you've got facts about earthworms and how they help the world. And so it's very informational, but engaging too. You can see just the commitment to quality here and the beautiful illustrations. I know Sophie is going to love it. The lesson I picked for today is lesson 20 about worms because the kids have been really fascinated with worms lately and for this curriculum you can complete the lessons in any order according to your child's interests it says. So we're going with lesson 20 today. Okay for the cute opening activity of this lesson we are placing as many pillows and comforters and blankets as possible in the middle of a room. Your number one job Sophie is to create tunnels underground by eating soil. Without using your arms, see if you can wriggle underneath the blankets, pillows, and comforters to create tunnels. Soren decided to be a worm as well. Where are my worms? Are you under the soil? There's one! 
There's another. <laughs> Try not to use your arms. Hi, Soren. There's Soren Worm. He's in the dirt. I know she's under there somewhere. The kids are loving this part, as you can tell. I think it's a really cute way to start off a lesson and actually you can conclude the lesson like that too. All right, the next part of our lesson involves a story from this big book of science stories that comes with the curriculum. And it's, it's a pretty thick book with really cute stories in it. And then after this story, there are some discussion questions on the back page. All right guys, here we go. Really cute illustrations. Mom, look at the, yeah, there the are worms doors, in the dirt. And then the, the, the word worms is made up of worms. Come on, Jenny, we need to hurry or we'll be late. Jeffrey called to his sister as he ran down the path. I am hurrying, Jenny yelled back, moving her legs even faster to catch up. Jeffrey and Jenny stopped when they saw the other children in their homeschool nature group. oxygen through their skin and it goes straight to their blood. Wow. Yes, yeah, octopus. Yeah, they have three hearts. Yeah. And worms, now you know worms have Five hearts, wow. What do you think would happen to plants, Sophie, if all the worms in the world disappeared? Um, well, what do you think would happen if they help plants, but then all the earthworms go away? What do you think would happen to the plants? They die. They might die, because they need worms, right? Uh -huh. They need the help from earthworms. So today we learned that they, we learned some cool facts about them and what they do, right? And how they help. So those discussion questions are just really cute. There were only three of them, and I'm sure some lessons have more or less, but I like how they wrap up the lesson. Well, there you go. I hope that was a helpful overview for you if you are considering getting this level of science curriculum from the good and the beautiful. This brand new curriculum, again, is called Science for Little Hearts and Hands. I thought it was darling and really engaging and beautiful, and I think it'll be so fun to add into what we're already doing for homeschool as a family. Since both of my kids liked it, I think it'll just be really special for us and really fun lessons to do together. If you liked this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here. I do plan on posting more over the summer, so I'm looking forward to that. If you want to see more peeks at our day-to-day -day life, be sure you're following me over on Instagram, and I also have an email list and a blog if you're interested in that as well. I will link all of the relevant links for you below. I hope you're having a wonderful day wherever you're at, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye, guys. Yesterday